This is a video in clinical medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. The insertion of a pleural chest tube is often done in a setting where immediate action is required. Nonetheless, adherence to sterility, analgesia, sound technique, and safety are always warranted. The most common indications for chest tube drainage are pneumothorax that is recurrent, persistent, under tension, or bilateral, any pneumothorax in a patient on positive pressure ventilation, hemothorax, recurrent or symptomatic large pleural effusion, empyema, and chylothorax. There are relative contraindications, mainly based on hematologic abnormalities, such as bleeding diatheses or coagulopathy. Blood products or coagulation factors may need to be transfused in order to reduce the risk of bleeding during the procedure. The procedure should be explained and consent obtained whenever possible from the patient or next of kin. A chest x-ray should be performed when possible prior to the chest tube insertion. Sterilized and fully prepared chest tube trays are often available in the hospital. The key materials required in addition are a sterile gown, mask, and gloves, sterile drapes or towels, local anesthetics such as 1% lidocaine, chlorhexidine cleaning solution and sterile pieces of gauze, 25 and 21 gauge needles, 10 cc and 20 cc syringes, a scalpel with size 11 blade, which should be on the chest tube tray, at least four or five dissecting instruments, such as Kelly curved clamps or artery forceps, which should also be found on the chest tube tray, non-absorbable strong sutures of size 1.0 or greater made of silk or nylon, a chest tube of appropriate size, a sterile drainage system, and dressings for the tube after insertion. The chest tube is sized according to its internal diameter. The length of the tube is marked with numbers to indicate distance into the chest wall. Additionally, there are several drainage holes at the distal end. A radio-opaque stripe runs along the length of the tube and outlines the most proximal drainage hole. This is used to confirm correct placement of the chest tube in the pleural space on a chest x-ray. Choosing the size of chest tube is based on the indications for the tube. In the case of a large pneumothorax in a clinically stable, spontaneously breathing patient, chest tubes with an internal diameter of 16 to 22 French may be placed. In a patient with a large pneumothorax who is clinically unstable, the same rules for chest tube sizes apply. However, if the patient has underlying lung disease, requires mechanical ventilation, or is anticipated to have a large air leak, larger tubes from size 24 to 28 French are recommended. In order to drain a viscous hemothorax or empyema, or to evacuate a pneumothorax in a patient receiving mechanical ventilation, larger diameter tubes sized 28 to 32 French are more often employed. Newer evidence favors the insertion of smaller size 10 to 14 French catheters, or pigtail drains, for the drainage of pneumothoraces in clinically stable patients, and for malignant pleural effusions. This is done using a Seldinger technique with a guide wire and often with ultrasound guidance. This technique differs from that used for larger chest tubes and will not be discussed further in this video. Once the chest tube tray is open and all the key instruments are identified, occlude the proximal free end of the chest tube with a clamp or forceps. Next, with another clamp or forceps, grasp the distal end of the tube. This will aid in passing the tube through the tract. The patient should be positioned either supine or in the semi-recumbent position. The ipsilateral arm may be maximally abducted to the side of the patient or, alternatively, positioned behind the patient's head in order to have optimal exposure of the insertion site. The ideal location for the placement of a chest tube is in the triangle of safety, the anatomical region defined by the lateral border of the pectoralis major muscle anteriorly the mid-axillary line posteriorly, which is also the anterior aspect of the latissimus dorsi, the apex just below the axilla, and the horizontal level of the nipple inferiorly. 
The nipple line may be an unreliable landmark for female patients due to breast tissue. To help with landmarking, remember that the triangle of safety should approximately lie between the fourth and fifth intercostal space in the anterior axillary line. Start your landmarking by localizing the clavicle. Next, count the rib numbers as your fingers traverse down the anterior chest wall. Once the correct intercostal space is found, move your hand along the space laterally towards the anterior axillary line. The incision will be made here. The chest tube will actually be inserted one interspace above this point. Mark the incision spot with the imprint of the back of a needle or a pen marking. Once full barrier precautions are employed, use the chlorhexidine cleaning solution and sterile gauze to create a large sterile field on the patient's skin. Cover the field with sterile drapes so that only the procedure site is exposed. Adequate analgesia is a very important step in this procedure, as chest tube insertions can often be very painful for the patient. The skin, subcutaneous tissues, deeper tissue layers, parietal pleura, and periosteal surface of the rib below the intended insertion site must be generously anesthetized. Using the smallest gauge needle, create a wheel of anesthetic in the skin overlying the landmark spot. Using the larger needle, anesthetize the subcutaneous skin layers through the wheel, aspirating as the needle moves deeper. Anesthetize the periosteum of the rib that lies below the intercostal space where the tube will be inserted. Once the parietal pleura is encountered, a flash of pleural fluid will fill the syringe if a pleural collection is being evacuated. If a pneumothorax is being drained, the syringe may only fill with air as the needle enters the pleural space. Withdraw the needle, aspirating along the entire path. Make an incision approximately 1.5 to 2 cm in length above and parallel to the anesthetized rib. Introduce the curved dissecting instrument, such as a Kelly clamp, into the incision. Begin dissecting the subcutaneous tissues in order to reach the intercostal muscles. After dissecting through the subcutaneous tissues, stay on top of the rib to guide the blunt dissection. This will create a diagonal path towards the correct intercostal space. When using a larger chest tube of sizes 20-30, 